fighting on their own ground. But here you are, you have a force, Ugandan and Burundian force that time, that were completely new to that kind of environment. It was required that we, we, we have a force of 12,000 in Mogadishu to take over Mogadishu. But we didn't have that 12,000. If I had the 12,000, I could have conducted such operations. Go through Mogadishu one day, hit it harder, and then consolidate. But I didn't have the force levels. The force numbers were really too low. That's why I decided now to think of phase line operations. The Al Shabaab's strength relies on hiding in those built up areas. And we started taking building by building, building by building. Every building was an operation of its own. We used to call it creeping operation. We said now that mobility does not help us, the best thing would be now to creep from street to street through buildings and then push them back. Because we realized that if we didn't change it, our Shabab would dominate all the surrounding places if we continue to restrict ourselves with our armored vehicles along the road. Amisim are faced with a heavy resistance as they try to establish a foothold in a city dominated by Al-Shabaab. There were times when it really was incredibly dangerous house-to-house -house fighting. I remember points where you could see Al-Shabaab positions no more than 50 or 60 yards away. Um, it was incredibly close quarter fighting. Amisim and the TFG forces begin to make gains across Mogadishu and target key enemy locations. My first operations in May was to move and capture Bakara Market. I knew what was going in Bakara. Bakara Market was the financial center of gravity of Al-Shabaab. That's where Al-Shabaab was getting much of its resources to fund the war. I didn't attack Bakara frontal. I, I first captured the stadium. The stadium was important because it was the headquarters where Al-Shabaab was launching the operation from. Uh, how does it feel for you to be standing here? This place up until well, less than 24 hours ago would have been suicide. For you. It's, uh, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, I can't describe the feeling that uh, we all feel as, as Somalis. Uh, I myself used to come to this stadium as a, as a young man to watch soccer games. Uh, to this place up until you know 48 hours ago was under the Shabab control, and as you can see today. Uh, it's, it is under uh, our Somali troops and Amazon troops under our control. How worried are you about controlling the rest of the city, though, under these circumstances? Because it's much harder to control the city than just at the front line. Well, uh, we are definitely worried, but the key is uh, we're confident that we are going to uh, have the city under control. We've already put some plans together. With the stadium under Amisim control, the force moves towards Mogadishu's commercial center. Bakara was being a commercial center, and highly densely populated, I was avoiding collateral damage and also destruction of the properties of the people. And that could make us have good civil military relations with the population. And I had also talked to the business community to tell Al Shabaab to leave Al uh, Bakara. If they don't, then we come in. But when we surrounded Bakara, they had no option. It took us about some three, four days to capture a distance of about. Uh, 400 meters. Every house, every room. You fight in a room, you find he's in another trench. He has dug a hole in a, in a house, and from that house, another house. Amisim and the TFG forces eventually take control of Bakara Market in a closely coordinated operation. They had literally woven the Somali forces, the Somali army, into the Amazon front line to the degree to which, if you went to the front line, you would see. Somali soldier, Ugandan soldier, Somali soldier, Ugandan soldier, shoulder to shoulder along the line. Amisim and the TFG forces push into new areas of Mogadishu, including the important district of Bundire, which surrounds the state house. You could not sit in that state house in Mogadishu. You can't. You can't even walk in the compound because you'll be shot at. So every time people are in the bunkers, they're down, including the president. The president came and asked me, take me away from here. And it was so touching when the president came to me and said, Paul, take me away from here. Around uh, June, I think, we took over Bondere district. The whole of Bondere district was taken. And that relieved us. Relieved, also brought security to State House when we took Bondere. 
It was a bit strategic, it was a high ground, we got some tall buildings, took advantage of that. Here, when you have not controlled the corridors and the, the tall buildings, yeah. that's where the problem is. Yeah. But once you have already uh, controlled the, the corridors, you have already constructed the escort barriers, mm -hmm. and you have entered the tall buildings, mm -hmm. then you, have, you take the day. Nobody can remove you from What we need now is not to overstress ourselves in this tall thicket. We need now to either all of us combine a force and we cut, we go to uh, industrial road. As the operation progresses, Al-Shabaab alters its tactics to a more guerrilla-style warfare. Roadside bombs and IEDs become a major threat to Amisom and the TFG army. I told for the third battalion now, to fight through and occupy a uh, um, uh, steel factory, the German factory. The German factory was where they were making the IEDs. That's where they were uh, impro making these improvised uh, explosive devices of all kinds, because there are machines there to drill, make explosives. And I knew it. I knew that's where they're operating for. Yeah, when we moved in here, as you can see, uh, we found uh, RPG shells, uh, we, we found uh, mortar bombs, uh, you know, they are also shells, you know, uh, f used to manufacture the IEDs and other big bombs. We are moving ahead and we think that uh, we could find other uh, such places mm. used by the Al-Shabaab to manufacture such uh, bombs. I told the Burundians to move from MOD to come to cigarette factory, as we are supporting them. They fought through to cigarette factory, and that's how that line came in. But still, we found ourselves still in the thicket of the Haban, Haban area. It's a difficult job, because you are, just as you know any other city, you have buildings, some are tall, some are short, and it requires a lot of manpower and you have to be adaptive if you must make a difference in terms of winning the war. And you end up taking building by building, street by street, with all the challenges, including heavy casualties. The TFG was marking the end of its tenure, and there was pressure that elections had to take place but the environment was very hostile. How do you conduct an election in a country that is 95% under the Shabab and Al-Qaeda leadership? I'm glad the whole of Africa have condemned these cowards. It was at this point that President Museveni, in one of the meetings that the United Nations or political office organized in Kampala of the International Contact Group, that he proposed that there should be an extension of the transitional period for one year. And in that one year, to be able to perform and accomplish some of the key transitional tasks that had not been accomplished in the previous eight years. And this was eventually to be approved in Kampala. And uh, that is where it takes the Kampala, the, the Kampala Accord name. Shortly after the Kampala Accord, Amisom soldiers, alongside the TFG army, eventually push Al-Shabaab out of many of Mogadishu's districts. Everybody was doubting whether that could be possible. Even the Somalis could not believe that we could liberate Mogadishu. The international community was also not believing that that was possible. When Shabab left Mogadishu, it was a turning point on our fight against the Shabab because we knew that from there on, uh, it will be easy for us to defeat them in, the, uh, in, in other areas. No, 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 not yet. We don't want to be excited. The war is still going on, and uh, that's it. It's not yet over. Although a sense of normality returns to the streets of Mogadishu, these gains have come at a high price for soldiers serving in the Amisom and TFG forces. It is very sad to lose even one single soul. It's 
It's very sad. Because our coming there was to make sure we preserved life. Remember that the kind of incidents that drove the Americans, the Pakistanis, the Bangladeshis, the British out um, in, in uh, previous UN missions, um, the Ugandans and Burundians suffered many times over, and yet they barely flinched. The fact is that the African Union troops were prepared to stay at the course, they were prepared to fight, fight hard. I remember one, uh, one day, uh, the Burundians lost 53 people, 53 soldiers. So uh, think about it, 53 young boys being killed in the front lines. You know, uh, they came uh, to Somalia uh, to save from itself, and they lost their lives. The sacrifice is the ultimate price uh, for peace and security in Somalia. When we are convinced of what we are going to do, we must always know that we can always suffer losses. On doit savoir que quand on va en guerre, il y a des bas et des hauts, il y a des castes, il y a des sacrifices. There were dark moments, no doubt about it. You visit the hospital, you find 10 of your people injured, you lose one or two or even more. Yeah, but then again, you are motivated by the fact that you must make Somalia safe for Somalis, first of all, but for the rest of the region and the stability of the continent and the world. And once you have that consolation, then tomorrow is another day, you go for an operation. Another week, you go for another operation. Three months following the Kampala Accord, Mogadishu is safe enough to host a meeting of key political players from right across Somalia, together with international partners. I call you to deliver tangible, meaningful resources and results. For the first time in decades, representatives of major regional administrations and religious leaders come together with a transitional federal government in a spirit of unity for peace. As the political process moves towards its deadline of elections, scheduled for the following year, Amisim's fight with Al-Shabaab continues in new areas of Somalia. While Mogadis was the epicenter of the confusion, but that did not mean that the, you know, that was the total defeat of the Al-Shabaab. So uh, that, that, that called for finding out of Mogadishu, protect Mogadishu from out of Mogadishu, not by sitting inside Mogadishu. And that, that's why we, we had to push to areas like Balad, uh, Denle, and then eventually to Afgoi, and then to Melka, uh, so that we can free those areas. And if we free those areas, then Mogadishu becomes more safer. And if the seat of government becomes safer, then the government can function. And eventually, we can, government can also start pushing its tentacles out of the city. In May 2012, the Amisim and the TFG army advance towards new towns, most notably Afgoi, from where Al-Shabaab launches its attacks on Mogadishu. Once again, Amisim and TFG soldiers' lives are on the line. When we finally got out of the built-up areas, that was very critical for me, because this reduced on the casualties, and we started to use our firepower to its full capacity. Of course, it created more momentum. To me, as a commander and the force I commanded, to even liberate more areas. So our aim is uh, to capture Fugoi. We're trying our best uh, to make sure that we accomplish that mission by today. Part of Battle Group 8 goes and cuts off Marka Road. And then the entire Battle Group 9 proceeds to Fugoi captures the bridge and crosses the Afgoye bridge. That is our objective. Namna nimeelezea nyinyi nyuma ni muhimu sana kazi ambayo tunafanya. Kwa Afrika na ulimwengu dunia. Ya kwanza hizi terrorists ambao tunapigana nao hapa ni nasumbua nyumbani. Tumepata hizi terrorists ya ADF mingi hapa sana. Kumbe wana train hapa. Wale sasa hivi wanasumbua Nigeria, Boko Haram, wana train nao hapa. Yote wanatoka hapa. So kazi ambayo ninafanya iko muhimu sana. 
Alafu ingine muhimu ambao jana rais na CL amesema mchunge ID. Nama na tumeshinda hawa. Wanaenda kukuja na uniform ya TFG kurupika katikati yetu. Platoon commanders, company commanders, section commanders, kila askari muhakisha kwamba unachunga mwezi yako. Hii ni sehemu ya undugu kubwa sana hapa Somalia. Hii ni sehemu ya urafiki kubwa sana Somalia. Lakini adui kusongoleza defense muhakisha mumuua adui. Tuko pamoja? Yes sir. Any al-shabab who tries to attack us must die. There is no mediation on that. Amisim captures Afkoye and pushes forward into the surrounding region. Our intention is to get the all of Lower Shabele. That is Middle Shabele and Lower Shabele. These are areas of Mecca, Afogoi and Balad. And subsequently connect to Baidoa. And subsequently connect to Baidoa. This is the mission. Of course, we had been getting a lot of Al Shabaab uh, uh, resistance around all these other areas, but we have taken them on. Right now, as I talk, Al Shabaab is on the run, and we are pursuing them. Motive is to pursue Al Shabaab until we get them. The strongest message I can give to them is. The Somalians who are with Al Shabaab, they still have room to come out and join other brothers of theirs for the development of this country. But to the foreign terrorists, it's very unfortunate. They do not have any room. 